Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the motion as presented by the Honorable Prime Minister. But before I get into my presentation, Mr. Speaker, I want to associate myself with the comments made by the member for Shrozel Saltibus when he expressed condolences to the family of Mr. Mafrejean, Jean, who in times past, Mr. Speaker, would have served the education fraternity and more specifically the communities of Saltibus and Shrozel as a school principal. Mr. Speaker, I also want to express condolences to my immediate family. Um, we have lost one of my relatives just two days ago at the OKEU, and to my cousins, Joyce Lynn, um, Linda, Leroy, Yusela, and the others, I want to express condolences. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the motion that the Prime Minister presented here this morning. And what is interesting to note is that this is not an accumulation of more debt for the government, but instead, Mr. Speaker, a guarantee that basically facilitates a relationship between two very well-established and well-run statutory entities in the National Insurance Corporation and the St. Lucia Development Bank. Mr. Speaker, those monies are for, among other things, housing, um, small business, and the productive sectors. And Mr. Speaker, when I listened to the Prime Minister and my colleagues before me speak about what is happening in housing, it speaks to, Mr. Speaker, a social revolution happening in this country. So you would have heard from the senior minister and member for Castries North, you'd have heard from the member for Babono, and you'd have heard from the member from Castries Central and the member for Grizzly as well. And they spoke to the different interventions we've made as a government to help the housing situation in this country. But Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister was very deliberate this morning when he singled out for special mention the public officers who are serving this country with distinction day in and out. And Mr. Speaker, I know several young professionals who work in the various ministries. They would have embarked on programs of studies overseas. They would have taken loans. And they are inundated, Mr. Speaker, by that quest, that demand on a monthly basis to service the student loans, the student loans that they would have taken from the banks. And it takes an inordinate amount of time for those loans to be wiped out. And by the time you get to 39, 40, and even your early 40s, Mr. Speaker, that is just about the time you would be making serious headway in terms of, of, of clearing of the loan. And it is only then that you will begin to contemplate taking a mortgage where you can build a house of a decent standard and quality for yourself and, and your family. But today, this government has come forward and it has said that we are putting a special facility and we're facilitating a particular mechanism at the St. Lucia Development Bank to help young public officers. And that is commendable. Only last week, Mr. Speaker, or week before, you'd have heard the Prime Minister in the public domain pledging or committing approximately $15 million to the, the OKEU and, and the health sector in general. And this is what I mean, Mr. Speaker, when I say that this particular motion, where we are guaranteeing $20 million from the NIC to the SLDB, is at the root or at the heart of a social revolution in this country. And Mr. Speaker, who can escape what is happening in education? But before I venture into education, I want to commend the Minister for Housing and the Prime Minister himself for the resources they have made available over time to the various parliamentary representatives in this chamber to help ameliorate housing conditions in our respective constituencies. Mr. Speaker, there is a man in my constituency by the name of Joseph Kelly, who goes by the community sobriquet or nickname Vaz. And he occupied a very deplorable structure that he called his home. And notwithstanding that his house was in a very poor condition, but there was a pride and there was a satisfaction with which he, he Mr. Speaker, resided in there. But we knew differently. We knew that better could have been done for him on the East St. Lucia Labour Party. And so through the housing assistance program, Mr. Speaker, we were able to 
completely demolished the structure that he occupied with his lady and his children and today he is the recipient of a brand new structure compliments the government Pamphil of Grand Ravine better known as Chin an elderly man who worked several decades on the farm particularly during the heyday of the banana industry but he had a structure that was just not acceptable in 2023 2024 for human habitation mr speaker what did we do as a government we ensured through the housing assistance program that his structure was demolished and today he is the recipient of a brand new little house that he calls home we will be assisting more people like Lush in, in Rich Four, and the list goes on and on. And I know, and I have seen it on social media, where people have attempted, Mr. Speaker, to derail the significance of such interventions. Not everybody in St. Lucia will be in a position where he or she will be able to construct a free and a four-story structure. And so we have to respect the four little plywood sheets that we put together that people call home, Mr. Speaker. And for me, it is about the dignity and the pride of ownership and the comfort levels that those structures provide. Mr. Speaker, with this facility for the public servants, as the minister responsible for climate change or sustainable development, if you like, Mr. Speaker, I would want to encourage that when we embark on the construction of homes in 2024 moving forward, we have to be sensitive to the climate realities that our country faces at the moment. It cannot be, Mr. Speaker, where we just construct homes with designs that existed previously, paying absolutely no attention to the strength and the frequency of the weather systems that confront our region today. And very recently, I demitted office as the chair of the Council of Ministers for the CDMA. And I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, that the Caribbean is the second most disaster-prone region in the entire world. So yes, we have put the facilities there and we will encourage young persons, particularly public servants, to construct new homes, but they must be sensitive to the climate realities. And that as part of the conversation moving forward, we have to be speaking about climate resilient infrastructure. We have to talk about rainwater harvesting. We have to talk about our ability to harness all the solar energy we have at our disposal that, that, that we're not tapping into. And all of this must inform, Mr. Speaker, our planning and the blueprint that we continue to de develop as we move to attain, to attain the, the, the so, um, SDGs, as we call them. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to say that we can support the demand of Premier Minister Laja for the Venezia. He can guarantee, he can put the money to buy the government to pay debt. But he can say that the government can back the bank development set list, so that we can create English and Lucia Development Bank. Ko yo kai pwete a pwipwe 20 million dollars hod National Insurance Corporation, NIC. Ek la han sa la ou mette yon bak lan, yi kai wede an chay moun fe pli di fo an bagay, kon moun ki kifle bati kai, pa patikile moun ki ka travay pe gouvernement, nou ka kuyo civil servants. An la jan sa, Mr. Speaker, la kai ni an facilite, kote moun ki an ti business, kai jwen si po hod gouvernement, because la han sa kontan kai twa pe depose an St. Lucia Development Bank. Mr. Speaker, je suis très confiance en l'habilité de la Banque de Développement de cette liste pour manager l'agence et pour que ça travaille pour les citoyens pour que l'agence ait des bénéfices pour ces gens qui ont prêté l'argent et pour payer nous um, entièrement. Mr. Speaker, très récemment, juste pour underscore ma confiance dans la Central Development Development Bank, notre gouvernement a garanti un loan for the SLDB of $9 million for educational support. And the Prime Minister alluded to that when he made, um, when he presented the motion. Well, Mr. Speaker, there are people in this country who are not recipients of scholarships. They have no land to mortgage. Their parents do not own any property. They have ability. They've demonstrated that they can learn. They have dreams and they have desires to become champion professionals in whatever sphere they choose but because of the socio-economic circumstances at home, they're not able to sit before a loan officer to secure monies to cause them to go to school. We as an administration have guaranteed for the St. Lucia Development Bank $9 million, Mr. Speaker, that the people I've just described and mentioned can tap into to go to school and realize their dreams in much the same way that children who come from affluent families are able to do so. And Mr. Speaker, that is part of the education revolution. 
the member for Babono cited what we've been doing in education, and the Prime Minister had a very um, cursory look at some of the developments in education. Mr. Speaker, today I can tell you, um, in the second week of a brand new academic year, we have done a lot for the students of this country. This government, under the leadership of the member for Castries East, has ensured, Mr. Speaker, that monies were put aside to pay facilities fees for every single child in the primary and secondary schools of this country. Mr. Speaker, this is the government that is leading the revolution as far as ICT incorporation in education is concerned. And it is part of this revolution of which I spoke. Mr. Speaker, as we speak in here this morning, we have established smart classrooms at a number of secondary and primary schools in this country. Interactive boards that have replaced the traditional chalk and talk as we knew it. Today we are saying that we are embracing a new modality for learning and for instruction, where children aided by the teachers can go up to a smart board on the walls of the classroom and they are able to manipulate those gadgets to stimulate their own learning where the teacher only facilitates it as a guide. Mr. Speaker, in keeping with ICT in education, the One Laptop Per Child program is on stream. And for every single child who sat or who participated in the, in the CPEA, the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, which replaced the common entrance as we knew it, every child entering Form 1 this year has been, Mr. Speaker, granted a laptop computer. The children do not have the computers at their disposal today as we speak. Because, Mr. Speaker, we as an administration have taken the lead for content development. And let me explain what I mean by content development. Content development means, Mr. Speaker, that in a quest to replace the traditional textbooks in the bag, that a child can go to school with a device and uploaded on that device would be all the different books and instructional material that the child would have needed. Mr. Speaker, the previous administration of which the member for Schwazel was a part, they entered into an agreement with a company from outside of St. Lucia, and they supplied what we call e-books. Mr. Speaker, the content that was developed or uploaded to the e-books was content developed by people outside of St. Lucia and who, do not who did not necessarily have an appreciation for the cultural considerations that had to go into the development of the content. The devices were extremely flimsy. And I recall very vividly a few months ago, pulling up on the waterfront, arriving there at about 8 o'clock ready for work, I noticed some of my staff from the Ministry of Education uploading boxes and boxes of stuff onto a van. And I asked them, what is this um, that you guys are uploading onto the vehicle? They said they were e-books that they had during the reign of the past administration that they were taking to Diglo because they didn't have the capacity to repair them. And they don't. Mr. Speaker, I saw the political sensitivity in such an exercise. And it was the technical staff and the administrative staff who had made the decision to dump the devices at Diglo because they had no uh, means of repairing them. I put a halt to, the, to that operation immediately, Mr. Speaker. And I ensured that this, those e-books were kept at the Ministry of Education because it's something that we may have to reference moving forward. But let me tell you what we've done. In addition to the devices being flimsy, in addition to the content where you have audio, visual material, people are speaking in accents that are foreign to our children. You know what we did, Mr. Speaker? We brought in a team of professionals within the school system and they were able to develop content for five subjects in the first instance. And they are currently working on more subjects so that by January of 2025, there will be 10 subjects uploaded on the devices that we are giving to the children of this country. So Mr. Speaker, this is happening in education. You would have heard me time and again speak about the one university graduate per household. And Mr. Speaker, this is perhaps one of the most exciting areas of programming in the Ministry of Education. Mr. Speaker, on Monday, God willing, I will be taking to the cabinet a list of approximately 150 names of young people from across the length and breadth of this country who will be awarded government boosters 
to pursue their studies at the South Louis Community College. And Mr. Member Speaker... Member Denry, that's all well and good, but we are debating now. Yes, we are debating. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I was just trying to show you how much of a social revolution that is happening in this country. And I would have said in my preamble that housing, Mr. Speaker, is one of the areas as would be health and, and education. So, Mr. Speaker, I support this motion. That is not the new government that has been to make the government more high, but the government just has been able to do it and has been in a position to be in a cause of the Department of Government or Statutory Corporations that we have created, the Bank Development, the APNIC, to be in a arrangement to be able to make 20 million dollars um, available for people who want to make public servants moun ki vle engage an ti business et pi bagay kon sa. Mr. Speaker, bon matin, ou te kay tan, mam chwazey, mam ka reposete chwazey de ou manye, yo ha fey espe kom e kou, ou pou plize mwa, bikaz yo te bay an allocation pou fe za fe kay e ki pou wela an sa. Mr. Speaker, mwen a siwe, mam ki ni wè skos abilite pou a fe an chwazey. Le premier ministre la bay tout mam parlement, la jan pou wè de, par an et puis famille en dedans de constituency pour pour acheter bagaille pour aller l'école ils jouent en allocation même quand nous tous qui en les façades ça là en caille en caille concept bon mais ça c'est pour moi moi espère pour cinq années avec mon pas jeune pas housing pas housing assistance pas 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 back to school assistance Just toys, Mr. Speaker, to buy my money and then enough money to buy your toy, your toy toys. The government in the toys cabinet. But, Mr. Speaker, I say all of this to say that consistent with the mantra of putting people first, this particular motion, Mr. Speaker, this particular facility that the Prime Minister has facilitated between the two entities can only redound to the benefit of the citizens of this country. And so, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the people of Denry North who have, on three different occasions, gone to the polls to repose their confidence in my ability, Mr. Speaker, I will heartedly support this motion. And as I indicated, it can only redound to the benefit of the people of this country. Notwithstanding all the noise you hear from the other side, Mr. Speaker, I believe, and as was vindicated yesterday by the pronouncements of the governor of the ECCB, that St. Lucia is on a right trajectory and the evidence is stacked before everybody's objective that this is one of the best managed countries in the region as we speak. I'm extremely optimistic about the future. I'm extremely optimistic about the future prospects under the guidance and leadership of the member for Castries East. And Mr. Speaker, it is for this reason more than anything else, I've stood here this morning to support the resolution.